Well, folks, we might have a race in the ACC Atlantic. Who knows? All right. Coming off that 96 points over time, it was quite a game in uh, Winston-Salem, but Clemson survives, moves on to 2-0, and and now the one that everybody's been waiting for, NC State, and everybody waits for, of course, our appearance with uh, Jason Priester from allclemson.com. Jason, how's it going? It's going pretty good, man. How about you? I am doing just fine. All right. Well, our theory on Clemson and Wake Forest goes out the door in regards to uh, Clemson controlling the line of scrimmage, you know, living in the backfield and making life miserable on Sam Hartman. So I was going to start with the good, but since we're there already, let's go with the bad. And, well, we might as well torch the area that's got torched on Saturday and start with the secondary. So Dabo said it right out of the gate after he gave all this credit to Wake Forest, and it was an amazing game, and those guys are great and amazing, and and I'm happy with the offensive improvement, but he's, he said, we'll fix the defense. We'll get it fixed. Yeah, that, that back end got torched pretty good by um, Wake Forest on Saturday. They're, 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 there's no nice way to say it. They did, they just got lit up like the 4th of July. Um, a lot of inexperience back there. It, on Saturday and, and Sam Hartman just picked them apart. You know, in the past few years, Clemson has been able to control the line of scrimmage. Like you said, live in the backfield, throw off his time and make life difficult for him. And, and Wake Forest did not allow that to happen on Saturday. They, um, they were in max protect a lot. Their, their backs were excellent at picking up the blitz and for all the griping that Clemson fans did about West Goodwin, not playing a lot of, press and man coverage over the first three weeks well that's what they did on saturday and those back those cornerbacks continuously give up the inside leverage and got beat down the field can't even get their head turned around and you know six touchdown passes four pass interference penalties you know i mean it it, it was hard to watch at times it, that secondary it, it, it was that bad Talking of Clemson uh, facing NC State coming up this week, we got Jason Priester on the line, as we always do, from allclemson.com on SI. Yeah, so, you know, the, the secondary did get torched, uh, but obviously the secondary's job in past years has been much easier against Sam Hartman because of the work of the defensive line. I, I can't imagine that these guys went from being first round NFL draft selections to bums in one week. Uh, but I also know how good of a coach Dave Clawson is. And because he's such a good coach, what a good staff he's hired. They obviously figured a few things out that they could do. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Like I said, I, I saw a lot of Max protect on Saturday and their backs were just when Clemson blitzed, their backs were picking it up and, and Hartman was having time, you know, they, they got to him a couple times, probably got to him, a, should have gotten him a couple more times than they did. But um, I thought Wes Goodwin kind of nailed it. I don't remember if he said it right after the game or if this was yesterday, but he said Clemson just did not do a good enough job up front of winning the one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, they needed to win more one-on-one -on -one battles and control the line of scrimmage better than they did. And I thought Wake's offensive line – played extremely well compared to what they've done in years past. Probably the most experienced offensive line Clemson will play all season long. I'm not saying it's the best, but the most experienced, you know, there, there's a difference. But, you know, I, if you had told me that Wake Forest was going to have that much success against that defense going in, I'd have never believed it. You know, I, again, I, I, I said it a hundred times leading up to that game that I thought, Wake Forest is the perfect matchup for Clemson. And like you said, I think that coaching staff just figured out some things and they were able to pick up those blitzes and take advantages, take advantage of where Clemson's weak on the back end. Unfortunately for Wake Forest, they're going to need Clemson to lose twice. That's probably not going to happen, but uh, that was pretty much their shot to win the Atlantic, most likely. All right. Well, let's go to the positive. And uh, Kobe Pace had a huge day, obviously. Will Shipley as well. They just rammed it down um, the throats of the Wake Forest defense. And, you know, DJ was, I don't know if that's the best game he's played in terms of throwing the deep ball in two years, but it obviously helped. He helped the rushing attack. The rushing attack probably helped him even more. Yeah, I thought it was DJ's best game 
to date. Um, he, I thought it, you know, it might not have statistically been better than the, his game against Notre Dame, but but I thought he, I thought this was his best game yet. Um, he he looked poised, in control. He's becoming a factor in the running game, and he's picking up tough physical yards. He's not easy to bring down like he was the first two or three games. He's becoming a more physical runner. And he's never going to be a guy that routinely rushes for 75, 80, 90 yards a game. But he needs to, you know, Clemson needs him to be that threat. He needs to be a threat running the ball. Clemson needs for opponents to at least respect their ability for DJ to run or respect DJ's ability to run. And he's showing in the past couple of weeks that he can pick up some yards on the ground when they need him to. Um I thought the offensive line was, you know, the pass protection was excellent. Um, I know DJ said after the game on one of those throws, he was just chilling in the backfield making a sandwich while he's waiting on a guy to get open. You know, he, that's the kind of time he had. Um, didn't think Clemson ran the ball as well as I thought they would have going in. Shipley busts off, a, I think it was a 53-yard run on on the first play from scrimmage. And then after that, you know, the yards they got, they were hard-earned yards. Um, Not a lot of running room, not a lot of running lanes. Wake made it tough on them running the ball. They had a little bit of success, but just not as much as I thought they would going in. You know, Clemson kind of ran it at will on Wake Forest last season. Not so much the case this past Saturday. You mentioned DJ talking about uh, being able to down a sandwich back there during one particular play. The play that I remember was they must have been about the 12 or 15 yard line. And he didn't he didn't do what he may have done in the past, which is throw the ball out of bounds because nothing was there. Nor did he get jittery and try to force a throw. But the offensive line, you know, held it for 15 seconds and he was dancing around and moving around. But he was working the pocket and then he threw a beautiful ball to the back of the end zone as somebody broke free across the back of the end zone. It might've been Bo Collins for a touchdown. I don't remember. Uh, But that was just, uh, you know, just showed that maybe he's just for some reason more comfortable in this game and has taken a step in the right direction. Yeah. I I think you're talking about the play to Jake Brennan's tool. And that's the play. That's the play he was talking about. He said that, but. Yeah, I think with each week, his confidence just gets better and better. And when he's confident, you can tell. Um, you know, I think Dabo Sweeney said he was get he's starting to get his mojo back. He he's looking like the DJ that they recruited, that every high school in the country wanted. You know, I think I think I think Dabo said it best the other day. You know, he he's he's looking like a pretty good quarterback that just had a bad year last year, and um. Nobody doesn't doesn't want to hear the reasons why he had a bad year. They just want to pile on, and everybody wants him benched and the young guy to play. And you know he's kind of sil- silencing some of those doubters right now. And I think he's been playing well, especially the last two weeks. Um, outside of that first half against Furman, and, and, and you know they kind of got bogged down there in the first half against Louisiana Tech for a little while, maybe in the second quarter. But overall, I think DJ's played pretty 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 good football over the first four games um he's thrown 10 touchdowns just the one interception you know obviously there's a few throws here and there he'd love to have back i'm sure but but he's making you know in general for the most part he's making the right decisions with the football he's not locking on to one receiver he's scanning the field going through his progressions um his footwork looks good his mechanics look much better than he did a year ago i mean it's just a night and day difference 